This is the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED, a high-end creator laptop stacked with many features like the stunning 16-inch OLED display and performance from the Intel Core i9 processor and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 GPU. This is exciting for me. You see, I have edited my videos on Final Cut Pro for the longest time. That meant I only had one option for a work laptop, a Mac, and I've had a separate PC for gaming. But over the past year, I've transitioned to using DaVinci Resolve for almost all of my video editing, which means means I can use both Mac and Windows computers. And I've been seeing some smart, engaging, and downright crazy things happening on the Windows side, like that dual screen Asus laptop. So I've wanted to see what I've been missing on the Mac side. And the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED is my first serious look at the options. So let's see what Asus offers for creatives, what I think about it from a Mac user's perspective, and what I hope to see in the future. When first looking at the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED, it's hard not to see their new logo, which I can only imagine makes a Michael Fisher happy with its Star Trek vibes. Adding to the fun, geeky vibes, it illuminates and even flashes green or red to indicate your battery status. It has a premium CNC aluminum unibody design that feels quite sturdy. It has a full-size HDMI 2.1 port, a headphone jack, a full-size SD card slot, which is critical for creatives, a barrel connector plug that I wish was on the the back, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 port, oh god, that is the worst name ever, and two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. And that makes it really easy to attach it to a ton of other devices, whether it's a display, an external storage, hubs, or whatever else. When you pick it up and hold it in your hand, it's quite blocky feeling, but at least the feet make it easier to grip. Opening it up with one finger is a breeze, but it shows the coolest part of this laptop. The keyboard rises when you open the laptop, which angles it as if you have the feet out of your normal keyboards, but it also helps reduce the heat generated by your laptop. Instead of it being an enclosed box of heat, it's like opening the windows. They said this increases airflow by 30%, which is significant. And this is what the webcam looks like and how the microphone sounds like when using it. It doesn't have a privacy slider, but a software shutoff for the camera. Alongside the camera are sensors for Windows Hello Security Unlock with your face, which I absolutely love, and I'm legitimately shocked that it is on the MacBook Pro when Apple has made it so popular on their iPhone, especially when they have that notch there on the MacBook Pro. Weird. The trackpad is terrific. If you've used a MacBook trackpad, you know how great it is to have a haptic trackpad over a wedge design. And this has that and more. You can activate a number pad if you click on the icon in the corner. And to the left of the trackpad, you'll see the Asus dial, which we'll discuss later on in the video. Above that, you'll see the backlit keyboard with some great travel. I really like typing on it. There's little to no deck flex in practical use, but if you press firmly on it, you'll get a little bit. The 16 inch 3.2K resolution 120 hertz display is one of the best parts of this laptop. Built into that beautiful OLED screen is also a touchscreen. It has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so you can see more of your content vertically, and it covers 100% of the DCI-P3 color space, so it's perfect for video editing. The screen is one of the sturdiest I've ever held, and it uses grill glass to reduce scratches. It is nice and bright with fantastic contrast that you obviously get from an OLED display, and it has terrific viewing angles with no noticeable color shifting. This is a great display. The only downside is that a bit of a grid is present throughout the screen that you can see if you look really closely. This is likely what is required to make it a touchscreen. This is not a deal breaker and is easily worth the trade-off of being able to interact with your finger or the Asus stylus. Not having this on the MacBook and having it here makes me realizing I'm missing out on a ton by using the MacBook Pro. Sometimes it's easier to tap on the screen to do something or sign something or get a fine-tuned movement in Photoshop that is so hard to get right with a mouse. This is huge for creatives. By the way, if you want to purchase the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED, check out the links in the description for the best price. It also helps support videos like this that you get to watch for free. Performance-wise, this thing is a beast. It's powered by a uniquely designed Intel i9-13905H processor that has 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory on the same circuit board, which results in a faster memory frequency. If none of that made any sense to you, it just means that it's like way faster than usual. And it also has an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 GPU. This thing quickly flies through DaVinci Resolve timelines, only slowing down for intense motion graphics and fusion effects, like all other computers, if we're honest 
Times. And Export Times on my OnePlus Open Review that had extreme motion graphics title slides only took 16 minutes and 57 seconds on the Asus laptop and seven minutes and 18 seconds on my M1 Ultra Max Studio. And beyond video editing, you gotta game a little bit and relax and you know, just have some fun. I was able to get a solid 35.24 frames per second in a Cyberpunk benchmark on the Ray Trace Ultra setting, an average frames per second of 104 and 16,223 frames rendered in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and a 3D Mark score of 24,090 in the Wildlife Extreme Test. You can find a link to the results for the 3D Mark test in the description. This thing is perfect if you want to both work and play all in one and on the go. Being able to game on a creator laptop is one of the best parts because they require much of the same high-end hardware. It's like a little hack to, you know, justify buying a work computer and then, you know, game a little bit. The Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED battery is at the maximum size allowed on a plane at 96 watt hours. Battery life can vary depending on how you use it and how much. If you're editing videos on it, rendering videos, or gaming a lot, obviously the battery life will be significantly less than if you're using it for everyday tasks. In my regular use for work, which consists of video editing, emails, and watching YouTube, I got about five to six hours of battery life, which I wouldn't exactly describe as stellar. There's hope for that being way better in future models, but I'll talk about that at the end. Charging is over a barrel plug, but if you have a high enough output USB-C charging brick, you can also charge over that. I can only test it with my 100 watt charger and it notified me that it was a slow charger. So maybe if you have a way faster one, it won't give you that message, but I don't know. At least it'll charge slowly. The real question that needs to be answered is, what is it like creating on it? Overall, it's pretty good with some areas that leave me longing for the future and what it brings. The laptop's display is a significant focus with tons of software and support to ensure a color accurate display. The Asus ProArt software has many calibration options and support for X-Rite color calibration tools, which I really greatly appreciate. The screen looks clean and sharp, but I do wish it was a 5K display to see more content, especially on something that's on the go compared to having like a 32 inch monitor. Interacting with the timeline using the Asus style is quite helpful in one setting in particular. The ProArt Creator Hub lets you choose between preset features and controls for specific apps, but the options here are minimal. In DaVinci Resolve, for instance, the play option and the single frame scroll aren't all that helpful when you can just hit the space bar or the left and right arrows. The move forward or back by one second was awesome. And I use it a lot while editing videos. It just makes it really easy to scroll through the timeline, especially if you're you know, using the blade tool. And having this smooth trackpad makes moving through the timeline even faster. Overall, I didn't find the AC style that helpful beyond that one setting or feature and wish it was more compatible with other things like the color wheels when color grading. But that's where the Asus stylus shines. Adjusting the color wheels with a mouse honestly sucks. Getting fine tuned adjustments is usually clunky. That's where the stylus or your finger works, like physically moving a dial, which I greatly enjoyed. This shines even more if you adjust the curves. It makes me see how much I'm missing regarding the tool that help me create on the Mac side. Overall, I'm excited about what the future generations of this laptop hold. The Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED is an excellent laptop for content creators. If you're already using PCs and want something other than a Mac, then this is a great choice. If you're doing a lot of color grading, I see this laptop showing off its strengths. In practical use while editing, it was a smooth and fast experience. It only fell behind significantly on exports compared to Apple Silicon-based Macs. And that leads me to think about what could be there for the future. With the launch of Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite and Orion processors, the team that brought the powerful and efficient processors to Apple Silicon is coming for Windows computers next. It excites me to see what an Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED would look like with those super efficient and powerful processors. It might outperform a lot of Apple Silicon based Macs right now. If I can have the export performance, efficiency, battery life, and all of these cool features like the touchscreen, dial, and stylus, I might have a hard time going with a Mac in the future for my video editing. But what do you think about the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED. Are you interested in getting it? There are links in the description for that. What do you like about it? Not like about it? Want to have in future models? And what do you currently use to edit with both hardware and software? I'd love to know in the comments. Thanks for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time. This review was made possible from a review sample provided by ASUS. They did not sponsor this video and have no editorial control over what I say. They are seeing it for the first time along with you. This video is fully supported by you watching it and any affiliate income I receive by you clicking the links in the description.